Good day, electrical students. Welcome to this uh, week lesson period in electrical installation and maintenance work. Today, let us consider the topic termination of joints in conductors. Termination of joints in conductors. Electrical installation cables are either terminated or joined at certain points. The joint could be for extension or it could be for terminating that cable at a point. And this very topic teaches us how we can produce neat and clear termination of cables. It is very essential. There are two basic methods of making joints and termination in electrical conductors. These two basic methods are the mechanical method and the soldering method. I would want to even call the soldering method the thermal method. Thermal in the sense that electricity, uh, uh, heat is used in joining the cables. Let us talk about the thermal, uh, the mechanical method. Mechanical jointing is done using connector. There is what we call connector block. Here with me is the connector blo uh, block. This connector block is used for connecting cables. And we have two different types of connector blocks. One is what we call the one-way and the two-way connector blocks. The one-way connector block is the type that terminates, it is used for terminating the cable, while the two-way is used for extending the length of the cable. One-way terminating connector and the two-way, both of them can be connected in an insulating material. Usually, they are fixed inside an insulating material of either porcelain, ceramic, or plastic. I want to, in my hands here, is one of them. This is a terminating block. This block has the, uh, it is of two way. That is, you can fix an electrical cable through one side and then join it to extend to the other side of the cable. The cable you will use is either a single go core cable or a stranded cable. The one way connector is used to terminate conductors, as I said, while the two way connector is used to extend the length of the conductors. The connectors are made in various sizes. With me are the two connectors. One is not covered with any insulator, while this one is connected, uh, is fixed inside an insulator to prevent the risk of electric shock to whoever is touching it. In this very situation, the connectors are made in various sizes for different gauges of conductors. For example, this connector is uh, for bigger cables, bigger conductors. Here I can join this type of cable inside. It is a two-way connector, two-way block. If you screw this one out, to give a space, then you fix in your cable. This is one cable to be fixed. It passes through the hole and the other one can go inside and the two of them will be pressed together at the joint using the screwdriver. You can now join the two 
join these two together. There are two screws here for proper grip. Now, fixing these two, I have joined these two cables together. I have extended the length from one end to another. The connectors are made in various sizes. This is for bigger cable. And uh, the student can here notice that this very connector accommodates the 16mm cable. But for this smaller size connecting block, the 16mm cable will never fix into this small block. For this reason, they are designed for smaller gauges of conductors so that they can fit into the hole and the joint will be uh, safe. As I said, any conductor used should be capable of accommodating the conductor to be uh, to, to, uh, accommodating the conductor, be it single or stranded core conductor. What do I mean by single or stranded core conductor? A conductor with many uh, hair or threads fixed inside the insulator is said to be a stranded type of conductor. Therefore, it is either a single core conductor or a stranded core conductor. For large cables, crimping method is used. What do we mean by the word crimping? If we go uh, ahead with, the le with this lesson, you will be taught or you will be shown what crimping method is. But this crimping, it is using a tool, one steel material in a uh, 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 spiral form fixed to the cable and then crimped to the conductor using a tool called crimping tool so that there will be proper grip between the conductor and that uh, termina uh, terminating material. So far, I have discussed the mechanical method of jointing conductors. The second method is the solder jolting. This method is soldering. Uh, this method uses soldering uh, method to give a permanent joint. The method gives sufficient contact. What do I mean by this? If they are mechanically joined, there could be a problem where the two joints will be weak. The joints may not be uh, compressing each other, the materials may not be touching each other very well in mechanical jointing. But in soldering, there is fusion, there is uh, adhesion of the solder to the two parts that are being joined. This prevents what is called resistance at the terminals of the conductors. Any conductor with free end possesses what we call a resistance. The surfaces have a resistance against each other and therefore the resistance will cause uh, improper flow of current through the two conductors. Soldering is done with the use of tools like soldering iron or welding torch. Last week, I discussed soldering and in the discussion, tools were mentioned. One of them is the soldering iron, which is used for transferring heat from any source. The source could be charcoal, the source could be electricity, the source could be from a solar panel, and it could be from kerosene stuff. All these are sources of heat that will be used for soldering. Therefore, in soldering activity, uh, to join conductors, the solder, solder is involved, 
flux is involved and other soldering tools are used. I mentioned solder in the last week topic when we were treating soldering. It is the metal that melts and uh, binds the two conductors together. And I said flux is a chemical used for cleaning the surfaces to be joined. And so before one embarks on soldering, the surfaces must be uh, cleaned off using flux, which will remove the possible oxides that are bound to be on the two surfaces in contact. So far, that is what we mean by jointing using uh, soldering method. This method prevents resistance between the joints. Now, what are the requirements in joints? Joints are required to be mechanically sound and electrically sound. What do we mean by mechanically sound? This type of joint, as I showed you, is a mechanical joint. If this joint is not properly uh, connected, there would be shaking. The two metal or two conductors will be shaking. And as it shakes, heat is generated. And this heat that is being generated can affect the quality of the cable. Also, in shaking, this very uh, joint can easily become weak. And that is not what we need in joints. So there are requirements of joints. The following are some requirements in any electrical joint. This requirement, number one, there must be sufficient contact areas between the conductors and the terminal. There must be sufficient contact areas. What do we mean by contact areas? This very conductor as this wire is, the body of this strands are the contact areas. If you make it to be very slight, if the two, the two conductors do not have enough touching, there is no space for the two to touch each other properly, it means it doesn't have enough contact area. So the areas that are to be in contact, they need to be sufficient for proper uh, gripping. Then number two requirement, there must be adequate mechanical strength to avoid disconnection when pulled or bent. What do we mean by this? There must be adequate mechanical strength. If at all, the joint is not properly made, like this joint, if I don't tie it, if I don't screw it tight, there is the possibility of it being pulled apart. Or, if the conductors are bent, there is that tendency of the joint to be removed. Or if you pull the two, the two of them can separate. And that is not what is required of a joint. The joint must be adequately, uh, must be adequate, have met, the joint must have adequate mechanical strength to avoid disconnection when pulled or bent. The third requirement is that there must be a provision for making and disconnecting the joint with ease. For making and disconnecting the joint with ease. This is a mechanical joint. It has a provision for making it and for disconnecting it. What I mean by making it is, if you join them tight, you are making the joint. And if you lose the joint and you remove or uh, separate the two conductors, you are disconnected. So the requirement is that there must be provision for making. The provision is that this very joint uses screw. This screw knot, you can lose it and you can tighten it up. That gives the provision for making it and disconnecting the joint with ease. If this joint were to be soldered, disconnecting it will not be easy. It will be difficult. And you, you, can, you can imagine heating up the electric soldering iron and 
uh, dissolving the solder so that the two uh, conduct, uh, conductors will be separated. That one is difficult. And so the requirement says that there must be provision for making and disconnecting the joint with ease. And this makes maintenance work easier. There may be a situation where you want to uh, connect at that joint for supply to another environment. Therefore, if there is no any possibility of making and disconnecting, the maintenance work will not be easy. Or you are uh, planning to carry out maintain maintenance work in a particular section of the installation. You need to disconnect the other section that does not need the maintenance. And so if there is no provision for making and disconnecting, that maintenance work will be difficult. If conductors are joined mechanically, there is a resistance between the surfaces in contact. I have explained that one earlier. The resistance depends on the pressure exerted to keep the surfaces together. The condition of the surfaces could be uneven or with dead, and this can affect the joint. What does this one uh, refer to? The two surfaces to be in contact, they need to be flat. If there is undulation, if there is an up and down surface, you know mechanically the screw that is pressing the two pieces together will not be balanced. Therefore, the joint will be a weak one. A weak joint produces uh, heat, it produces Un, un, uh, unnecessary heat at that joint and there is high resistance from that joint electrically. Therefore, if conductors are joined mechanically, there is a resistance between the surfaces in contact and the resistance depends on the pressure. The pressure, this is the screw that presses down the two. The two conductors are pressed down, they are under the pressure of the screw. So, if the pressure is high, there will be no shaking, and there will be no resistance, and there will be no heat generated at that very particular joint. Uh, students, I want to uh, get into another interesting area, that is the requirement, the IEE requirement on joints. I don't know whether my students are familiar with the term IEE. What do we mean by IEE? The full meaning of IEE is Institute of Electrical Engineers. And this body gives requirements on joints and terminals. You know, in every organization or in every profession, there are rules and regulations. There are uh, guidelines for the practitioners to follow. The body that is responsible for checking electrical activities is a body called the Institute of Electrical Engineers and they have provided requirements on joints and terminals. Do you know that if you don't have good joints, it can result into fire outbreak? Do you know that it can cause your appliances? It can easily send Excess, uh, excess current or abnormal current into your appliances. Therefore, the study of joints and terminals is very, very important to the electrician. The IEE requirements on joints and terminals says that one, all terminations and joints must be accessible for inspection. It is expected that Electrical installations are inspected from time to time. Two, joints must be electrically and mechanically sound. When we say electrically sound, we mean there is no any hole found within the joint. That joint should be solid without any hole. And mechanical, mechanically sound means there is no shaking, the joint is tightened up with either bolt and knot or screw. This is to allow current to 
to, to flow in the two conductors joint without any resistance. Three, no stress should be imposed on a terminal or joint. What do we mean by stress? Stress could be a pulling force or a bending force. And so this very point says that joints should not be pulled or should not be bent or else it will cause a problem to the joint. Number four says where two or more conductors of different conductors are joined of different materials are joined, care must be taken in order to avoid corrosion. It is a practical fact that if you join two different metals, like this very joint, if one material is copper and the other is aluminum, there is the possibility of the joint to be uh, to, 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 to uh, form rusting. It will rust because the aluminum does not produce any uh, uh, resistive substance. But the copper, with time, it produces an insulation where the two contacts can be separated. Therefore, there should be uh, care should be taken in order to avoid this corrosion. The fifth and the la uh, the fifth uh, 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 requirement is that insulations damaged either by heat or stress must be attended to for safety. If in the course of using tool like the screwdriver or the plier, if there is a damage, this very damage should be attended to either by sealing it with an insulator or uh, any insulating material. Then there will be safety. The last requirement in this case is that acidic corrosive flux left at the end of soldering operation must be washed to avoid rusting. There are some uh, flux, fluxes that they are acidic. As I discussed last week, we have acidic fluxes and uh, the resin-based fluxes. And these acidic fluxes, if you don't wash it after soldering, it can rust. And in order to avoid this, after finishing your soldering process, the joint should be washed. I hope at this very point, my students can now uh, talk about joints and terminals. And then uh, in the next lesson period, by God's grace, there will be an exercise for the students to carry. For, for this moment, we say see you in the next lesson.